To burn it down media, my name is Christopher, and around these parts, I like to react to anything that gives you goosebumps. So, you know, I have been on a Suicide Boys kick. Uh, go check out my playlist of my reactions. Uh, you know, I figured now is the perfect time to watch like a short biography of them so I can get to know them better. You know what I mean? I figure we could do that together on this uh, whole journey to get to know Suicide Boys. So this is the rise of Suicide Boys. Uh, please like and subscribe. We're building this channel one day at a time, but we're in this together, so it makes it that much easier. Go check out my playlist of all my reactions of theirs. It's pretty awesome. They're just getting funner and funner and funner, so I'm having a blast doing this. So uh, I think this could be really, honestly, a fun one. So yeah, let's do it. I'm excited for this one. Alright, yo, I'm excited about this. The Rise. Cousins. They both had rough childhoods and saw an escape in music early on as teenagers, <clears throat> but then they decided to team up. And it's safe to say it worked. It took over the underground scene in mid-2015 with the help of Puya. Puya was already wow. popping, but gave them the opportunity to collaborate on Southside Suicide. He said he saw a okay, lot of potential. On. So I know Puya, uh, 2015. I didn't know that that's when they started. That's, that's actually really interesting. It's gonna be a lot of pausing because I really want to get to know them today them 2015 was when my life changed forever i did a mixtape with the suicide boys yeah we dropped that mixtape and it fucking it just blew it just blew the fuck up this tape changed everyone's lives it went viral and everyone so was talking cool. about how crazy of a project it was just love it haven't reacted to it i'm going to though that boys had a whole new sound and it stood out more than everyone else especially at that time back in 2015. if you were around for that time you know what i'm talking about it was incredible throughout 2015 and 2016 the boys put out some incredible projects such as now the moon's rising dark side of the clouds and internal gray they started touring and it was incredible to see the fan interaction at their show since they started popping ruby had a moment in 2015 on tour where he realized they were saving people's lives Ruby said, I remember we played a show in Dallas in 2015. It was the first time we played a show to a crowd of people who were freaking out over the music. Later that night, we were selling our merch, and I'll never forget this kid coming up to the table. He told us that the new mixtape we dropped helped him through these tough times, like losing his mom to cancer a few months before. Our jaws fucking dropped. We didn't know what to say. That's when we realized Suicide Boys is an ironic name. Think about that. Think about just being there and just being able to save people. You know, it's so beautiful, and that is what I think is so amazing about like music in general. And uh, it's just, it's amazing. You know what I mean? Music saved me through this heart failure and kidney failure. So it's. We are saving people's lives. That was a huge moment for Ruby to see the impact he has on people. As time went on and they got more and more famous, the boys started struggling with drug issues. They were their entire lives, but it got worse, I would imagine, with the more money coming in and the more fame. It probably didn't help. Yeah, Graham said, my really sobriety hard. date is February 19th, 2019. Long story short, I finally got to a place where I wasn't able to talk to Ruby or my team. I was in psychosis for like nine months because I was combining so many downers and uppers. I was literally out of my mind. Guys did the healthy thing and they got to the point where they pulled back from me. You know, it's hard to give motherfuckers like us consequences. Kyle told me at Thanksgiving in 2018 that he couldn't watch this anymore and I still walked away. I said I'd get help but basically I disappeared on him. Then I ended up isolated from everyone I loved. I got to the point of pain where it was unbearable and that's when I started detoxing in a place in California. To maintain it, I've done a lot of therapy and I'm in a couple 12 step programs that really helped me out. Now Ruby had a big issue in 2020 with drugs as well. By the way, I'm a recovering alcoholic. Uh <clears throat> and drug addict i was a drug addict super super severe uh been s completely sober over a year and a half completely changed my life uh when i got the diagnosis so yeah uh good for them though you know what i mean he says i went to rehab the night of october 26 2020 it happened after we had a team meeting at scrim's house and i kept going in the bathroom and snorting shit eventually wow. i took so much i was fucking falling asleep on them and the meeting then they had an intervention i was kicking fighting and cursing them out i said i'd never talk to them again then i did go and it was one of the best experiences of my life it made me realize i had my head so far up my own ass i thought i knew everything i've been trying to rebel my whole life because i hated myself so much to clarify i'm not fully sober but i don't do any opiates or hard shit anymore I still smoke weed. So right. what do you have to listen, do? Listen, under listen, the the one of the like hardest parts is is admitting and understanding your problem. 
You know what I mean? Like, just uh, admitting to yourself, I have a problem. I have an addiction problem. I cannot go through the day without this alcohol or whatever, you know, it is. But once you can get past that step, man, ah, you can do anything, really. To help him. He just really, he gave me my space and it supported me. Look, the thing that I told him is that I'm never going to judge you for it. I'm never going to, like, get mad at you for, like, slipping up. I just don't want you to lie to me. Right. It's it's hard, though, bro, when you're you're an addict and you're in that position. Right. You know, people say, oh, just be up front with me. But that's that's very hard. He it's would very cry, hard. Up. He yeah. would cry. Like, it's very hard. Because at one point I was like, well, I'm your fucking cousin. You've known me for life. Why can't you just be honest with me? And he would cry being like, because even though I don't want to hurt him. All right, boys, this video is sponsored by Geology. Geology is a 13 time award winning skincare company recognized in Men's Health, Esquire, and Ask Men. Geology skincare helps fight acne, reduce oilness, prevent wrinkles, combat dark and puffy under eyes, have smoother and hydrated skin, yeah, and target Sorry. signs of I'm aging. Just sitting here Over the years, ads. we've all known I've had a little uh, bit I, of I like acne, this but once this way, company sent this to me about a month ago really my stuff has cleared up significantly like way better than i've ever had in my life my skin years, is actually. completely clear on my face this everyday face wash is fire nightly retinal cream it also does really well hey man, and then the tone control in the morning on my i have no <laughs> side effects whatsoever so my there, face is way. completely Thanks clear it's like incredible i don't know how it's working it's let so me tell you this face wash right so here boys exciting, smells dude. amazing Why am I even like actually smells amazing the routine is so simple too in the morning i'm sorry guys for doing this i don't know why i'm watching full control song and we actually both relapsed on heroin that day we wrote the song low key we looked at each other and said let's write something real today i think that's when suicide boys really started to speak to what our fans were going through especially with drugs anxiety and depression we all know those things exist and people act like they want to help but they don't ever do anything that's why i hate mental health awareness sometimes you can't just make everyone aware we hope we can do more than that with our music there's a lot of moments wow. where ruby realized the impact they had on people and the cult fan base they were forming around depression drugs and anxiety it's a huge problem in today's world but what it did is it built a strong connection between the boys and their like fans that. more than majority of artists could ever build and honestly it's very rare for mainstream artists to ever talk about drugs or uh depression anxiety they try to keep everything positive but the boys do the exact opposite and they try to shine light on the problem i've, I've and- noticed that about their music they really go in about just all that you know what I mean? those topics uh, depression anxiety they actually really do i that's one thing about, i just love about their music i think that's a giant reason how they have such a cult fan base right now in the summer of 2016 they released radical suicide it was the first time they got on the charts the five track ep produced by getter peaked at number 17 on the billboard rap charts getter? this no is a whole new level getter, for an underground way. artist it's very hard to get on the uh, billboard rap charts and they did it in 2016 Throughout 2017, they put out a few singles. They started recording their album. They said they initially wanted to write about our experiences on the road and express how our lives have become slightly more extravagant. On September 7, 2018, their debut album, I Want to Die in New Orleans, was released. It was their first big commercial album, and it put them on a whole new level compared wow. to other people in their really? genre. Their fans were desperate for the album, considering it was over a year since they'd released anything else. And so this was... A very very hyped up moment i think what attracted people the most to them besides their music was their strange image can you tell me what your favorite experience with the suicide boys is i would love to know you know or anything like that i love to hear stories like that no one had music videos like these guys besides maybe bones but their music videos leveled them up so much more than people realize ruby's lyrical abilities are extremely underrated as well he has some of the craziest bars and flows possible. And we all know Scrim's voice was very captivating at first, considering it sounds like a dead person is talking. They actually just put out their first music video in the last like four or five years, last week. So it's a whole new era for the boys to be putting on music videos, and I'm so fucking excited for it. I hope they continue to do that. Last year when they were touring in 2021, I went to their show and I asked Ruby why they stopped making music videos. And he said he hated cameras and didn't want to do it. Which would probably explain why he has a shysty mask on covering his face in the video now. I would imagine it's going to be like that for a lot of videos, if I were to guess. In 2020, some sketchy shit happened. 36 Mafia launched that $6 million lawsuit against Suicide Boys over samples. DJ Paul and Juicy J claim that Suicide Boys have infringed on the copyrights of 35 different songs. Suicide Boys also claim that Juicy J verbally agreed to clear the samples as an exchange for the group's work on the Juicy J mixtapes. But then, at the same time, one of their own inside guys sent me a list of maybe 40 songs that they sampled me on with 40 million views here, 50 (laughs) there. And then on top of that, they bring out a Capitol Records album that's a straight remake of one of my songs off one of my last albums with me in it. Start off with me in it. This was a weird lawsuit. I made a video about this back in the day. I was confused because Juicy J and Suicide Boys were friends and they worked a lot. 
they were suing them, and I think it was all because the DJ Paul was just wanted bread for it. Wow. The boys didn't clear any of these samples. It is really stuff. illegal to do this. They had troubles in the past with Dead Mouse, the producer as well for Antarctica. That song got taken down, and that was a fan favorite. The Suicide Boys, some rap band from Atlanta, literally verbatim took a song of mine and rapped on it, mm. and then put it out. Now all we did was send a C and D, which right. is common, saying. Don't use my While phone. we appreciate your effort, yeah. Yeah. I would prefer you not to monetize my yeah. work <laughs> and take it off, right? That was a huge song back in 2016, 2017 era. That song got taken down for like four or five years. And you could only find it on YouTube. They ended up settling this lawsuit with the 3-6 Mafia guys, but it never says how much they had to pay them or any deal they did behind the scenes. In 2021, the boys yeah. truly leveled up. They signed a strong eight-figure deal with The Orchard while headlining a U.S. tour that sold almost 500,000 tickets. Yes, you heard me correctly. The boys signed an eight-figure deal and sold 500,000 tickets on one tour. All this following the release of their album, Long-Term Effects of Suffering. This was a whole... That might be the best um, name for an album I've ever heard in my life. Long-Term Effects of Suffering. I think that's going to be my next tattoo. I'm serious. I love that. Wow, man level i think the reason why they leveled up so much was partly because of covid and a lot of people started uh listening to their music in covid and from tiktok in november of 2021 the boys finally got their first platinum single for the song and to those i love thanks for sticking around reach 1 million sales the song has gone viral on tiktok throughout 2021 which if you know scrim and ruby they probably didn't like that tiktok finally got a hold of one of their songs <laughs> but in the end they made so much fucking money off this one song i can't even imagine considering the boys have remained in distribution deals and not normal record deals they make all the money off their streams maybe 20 percent or something goes to the label probably 10 percent actually and then their manager probably gets a little cut too their wow. streaming numbers are absolutely insane boys listen up in 2020 and 2020 alone they surpassed over a billion streams so on spotify cool. which equates to four to five million dollars a year only on spotify and that's just a rough estimate. If I were to guess on all platforms, they're making around $10 million a year off streams. Heck another yeah, 2 to 3 go, million though. off merch. And another it. 2 to 3 million off tour. These are all obviously rough estimates, but that's just my guess. It could be way more. It could be a little bit less. My guess is the boys are making around 10 to $15 million a year for the past two to three years. Deserve Although it, 2022 will be their biggest year by far because they're doing a small arena tour. They're selling out merch. They put out a new album last week. Their hype is on a whole nother level. I feel like every time I'm on TikTok and shit and scrolling, I see a video of them performing live and it has hundreds of thousands of likes. I know they probably hate it, but TikTok has helped them a lot in my opinion. Them as a brand, if I were to guess, they're worth at least $20 million as a brand, but it could be 30 or 40 million in the next two three years boys at this rate especially like they keep doing Shirts. arena tours putting out an album once a year and just you know, grinding. i like their style a lot <laughs> i feel like i would wear a lot of their stuff dude them as a brand they're worth at least 20 million dollars and looking back at what they were in 2015 it's astounding at how big they've gotten in the last seven years i would have never thought that they could be that big i thought they would be very successful but selling out arenas it makes me, I, I'm speechless looking at the new live footage of them. They're probably selling seven to 10,000 kids a night. It's fucking unreal. I can't even put into words. I, I look, you feel proud because I've been a fan of them for so long and I've met them and I know how genuine of people they are. Like they're some of the most genuine That's guys cool, I've ever man. met. They talk to me for two hours straight. Uh, Scrim yeah. showed me the full album back in 2017 and they were just so fucking genuine. So cool. And these are the type of people that actually deserve to be famous. Just don't give a fuck what anyone thinks and they do their own thing and they're nice to everyone. Yeah, I'm just proud of the boys. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Like the video right now, podcast channel. Suck. Heck yeah, man, that is so cool, dude. I really, I'm gonna like this kid's video. Um, I'm already subscribed. Uh, Man, I just love the Suicide Boys, dude. I just think that they're so cool, so awesome. I love to see this rise, man. They're just awesome, and I, I just discovered them. You know what I'm saying? So I, 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 it's only a rabbit hole that I will dive into. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I, I love all you. You know, their fan base is so sweet. Y'all have really taken me under your wing, and I just love you so much. Uh, I'm just really thankful, and uh, I'm getting better and better every single day. You know, I'm learning each day. Uh, so, yeah, I, I just, uh, we're getting there, so hang in there. Uh, stick with me through this, and we will get through it, okay? Uh, it truly is one day at a time, but we're in this together, so it makes it that much easier. All right, guys, I love you.